morning. Good morning, Matthew Dickinson. How are you going, uh, Richard Perno? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, independent pricing and regulatory tribunal, all three individuals, have now succumbed to the pressure with 86 New South Wales councils, including ours, to increase the rates by up to 1.6 to 2.5. They've said, OK, we understand you can't afford a 0.7% increase. It's way below CPI. It's way below inflation. And now they're turning their attention to a review. How do you see this play out? Well, it was long overdue, I think, Richard. I think the whole concept, when they came up with 0.7% this year in particular, when inflation was hovering around 4 maybe 5%, and saying to councils, make do with 0.7%, it was pretty obvious the system was broken. And it very much looked at a past historical view, which is all lovely, but it doesn't really relate to what's happening in the future. It might be somewhat related, but it really doesn't give a clear indication of what's happening in the future. And it went back too far, I think, in terms of looking back at that historical view. So getting to the future view, what's inflation going to do? What do councils need to do to keep up? And to give you an idea of some of the pressures on council, Armadale Council are going through a process at the moment. They're asking their community for a 50% rate increase over three years because they believe they are so far behind in their infrastructure backlog, in their decline of their assets. So I'm not suggesting that IPAD go and allow 50% over a three-year time frame, but if you start to allow 0.7% on multiple years, you end up having to do a catch-up, which is exactly what Armadale is trying to do at the moment. Well, you can't, how much can you afford from a rate payer to uh, fill up our potholes and do our rates, roads and rubbish? I mean, how much does, it, does this council, your council, Matthew Dickinson, get from us? But it still is, it falls way short, doesn't it? It does fall way short. And of your overall income for a council, typically most councils across the state, there are exceptions, but most councils would only get about 30%, maybe to 40% from their rates revenue. There's lots of fees and charges that council charge as well. And there's lots of government grants that come in, both state and federal government grants that come in. So you aren't getting all of your income from rates, but it's a good base level income. And so you you rely on that income every year to be able to take care of the base services that you're trying to provide to to the residents. Right, you can add up the amount of residents and say, okay, we're going to get this amount of money. So at least we've got that in the kitty. That's exactly right. There's a baseline. Fees and charges, yeah. you're pretty confident, apart from when a pandemic comes along, but you're pretty confident that you're going to get certain levels of income from your various you know, businesses, if you like to call them that, or the units or the various items that council operates. So you know you, you're pretty sure you're going to get that. But the same as a business thinks it's going to get a certain amount of income each year. It's not always perfect in that, but at least your rates, you're pretty confident you're going to get that rates income, that base level of income. Yeah, but then again, you get some of those who say, oh, yeah, you cut the uh, the rate peg away from that and councils will go berserk. Well, I don't think you'd see councils go berserk because ultimately what council laws are trying to do is do things that are good for the community for the betterment of all society and putting rates up by a ridiculous amount is not going to do that. In my experience on all the time I've been on council, there's only been one special rate variation that I can remember being involved with, and that was specifically for the theatre. From memory, it was 2.5% on two consecutive years to be able to build the theatre. And there was a lot of debate around that, but again, it wasn't something we did lightly, and there was a huge demand for the theatre. I think now it is a great asset that we have in our community. So I think that one was okay, that one was justified. So you've really got to be able to justify it to the community if you go out there and start to put rates up by some ridiculous amount. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, it's up now for 86 councils, ours including, Matthew, 1.6 to 2.5. That still doesn't match uh, the, what they're thinking will be inflation by Christmas at 8%. Yeah, that's right. So we, in the end, from our perspective, the 0.7% when we were allowed to go back and apply for a, a slight variation of that, something more reasonable, we ended up with 2.3%. You're right across the state, it was anywhere from 1.6 to 2.5 for a variety of reasons there. But you're right, the 2.3% doesn't any, go near matching what it's been over the last year. And then going forward, as you say, it's tipped to reach maybe 7.75%, maybe 8%. So how do, you, how do you run a budget with that? The way you do it is you just have to reduce the services, reduce the facilities, reduce the assets that you're providing for a community. So when a community says, please give us more and insert anything that people want there, whether it be more potholes filled or more buildings or more new sports facilities, whatever it is, well, you just don't have the money to do it. So you can still keep running the council, but it just means you can't provide as many things as people want. And then as you said, 
said, Matthew Dickinson, along comes a pandemic and the money you thought you had to be able to fill up the, the bloody condition of our roads it gets sucked up by all of that. Yeah, that's right. And then you get lots of rain like we've had, and, of course, yeah. that has an impact. And then you get rain that impacts various things. We've had damage to our pedestrian bridge, obviously, so there's another expense. Yeah, we've got to close some of the... I talked to Murray Wood earlier, all those uh, track of Riley and, and uh, the likes, Tamworth are still shut as well. And, of course, you got the Mr T word that floated around for a while as well, didn't you? Well, that's that's exactly right. And then you've got a little bit of that riverbank falling away from the river, so we're going to have to look at some way of addressing that. So there's a whole range of issues in a community that are yeah. popping up from time to time, and you're all Indeed, trying to make do. Dickinson, do we need the IPART, these three individuals, to tell us what to put our rates at? Why, does, why are we the only state in the country that has a, a rate peg, per se? Well, that's a very good argument, and that's one that's been discussed I think at every local government conference I've ever been to, that seems to be a common discussion point. The state government has decided that that's the way they want to keep some control on rates, if that's what they call it. And so at the moment, we're stuck with that. But there is a good argument to say, if you want your council in charge of your local community, then individual councils should be able to set their own rates for that community. And that there's logic that's in right. that argument. There is to let's get a political party started that wants to get rid of rate pegging and also, uh, if you like, a payroll tax. That would be good. You'd win, wouldn't you? Well, if you got rid of payroll tax, that would be a huge win. The rate pegging, though, some people see that as a safety mechanism, so I understand that totally as well. There are some people who say, don't put our rates up, and I understand that. But again, I, especially in my return to council, I've heard more and more people saying, Please give me new, whatever the facilities might be they want, whatever their particular bent is, please give me new ones of those rather than people saying, please put rates down. Sure, some people still don't want rates to go up, but they'd prefer to have new facilities or fixed roads or make the community that we live in better seems to be more the focus rather than keep rates down at a very low rate. Let me ask you this, because I know you're at this conference, I'll let you get back to it. How much behind the eight ball is the Dubbo Regional Council to pay what you want to get done? I don't have a figure for that. I can go back to previous on council. We had the Percy Allen report. And yes, at that stage, Allen, yeah. Yeah, that, at that stage, we had an infrastructure backlog of around $14 million. It could have been even as high as $20 million. Along came the amalgamation and that all got forgotten about. And then we've got two councils joined together. We need to go and look at that whole new process again with all of that infrastructure backlog. But I think you'd quite safely say, Richard, that the amount that it was before is at the very extreme low end of what it possibly would be now. So quite easily it would be over that $20 million, but I'd suggest much more than that. But I don't have an accurate figure for you. No. Yeah, I remember Percy Allen, we talked to him casually. I guess the terms of reference also would explicitly include an investigation into the population growth factor as well, wouldn't it? It'd have to include that. It's an interesting discussion we have with state government. I think just about every time they bring out population predictions, and in fact many years ago, you may remember, we got Bernard Salt to do yeah. a, a complete demography, yeah. yeah, that's right, a complete demographic overview of where Dubbo, and that was Dubbo City Council at the time, where Dubbo would be at certain points in time, 2030, 2040, 2050, that type of thing. And then we presented that to government to say, you've got your projections and you're putting certain services in place based on those projections, but here we've had an independent person, sure we paid him as a consultant, but an independent person who's given us project predictions and projections that are much different to what the state government had. And we had some success in that in getting extra services based on those projections. So it is a tough one. And other councils around the state, we have that common discussion where the state government seems to get it, in our opinion, wrong about those projections. And some may argue they might do that deliberately. I'm not saying this, but some may argue they may do it deliberately because then they need to provide fewer services for yeah. those various communities. Well, we have a voice in state parliament, don't we? We elected him. Exactly right. And that's exactly where you go to your state member to have those discussions. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll see what happens now. I think the uh, draft is due to be released in February. It'll be interesting to see what they cobble together uh, and uh, they don't keep it secret. We want to see how they arrive at the figure. But, uh, gee, even 2.5 is way short of what they're expecting, anywhere between 7 and 3 quarter and 8% inflation by Christmas. Uh, I don't know how we're going to feel that. I'll check it back into your conference, Matthew Dickerson. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Richard.